Okay, so first of all, we're going to do the first part of this, which is starting to rebuild this wear plate that you can see here, and also this impeller. What you can see on the wear plate is quite a, little, a bit of wear. It's probably between three to five millimeters deep. We're gonna bring this surface back to being completely flat, because this pump at the moment, on its last flow test, was running at about 40% of its original efficiency. As for the impeller, you can see it's quite pitted. Now, some of the minor pitting we're not going to worry about for this pump because it's not a, a very extreme service pump. But what we do have is quite a bit of wear here along the edges of the uh, impeller. So we're gonna repair that, rebuild that. We're gonna let this sit for a little while after this and then we're going to do a final coat over the top to give it a nice smooth finish. So, first of all, with any type of repair work, or any type of coating work, the most important part of it is to make sure the surface is prepared well and it's cleaned. So prior to being grip blasted, these were cleaned using Loctite SF7840. Then they were grip blasted. After that, we blow them down with nice, clean, dry air. And then finally, we will give them a quick wash down with a solvent. So we're either gonna use VR10 or uh, SF7063. Both, pro both of these products can be used as a solvent cleaner. Then we'll move on to mixing on the product and applying it. So first thing I need to do is the area we're gonna be coating, give it a quick clean. And you'll see this is quite a fast flashing solvent, but I will just grab a cloth to speed it up. So you can see how fast the solvent comes off the surface and that's taken all the additional contaminants with it, any oils that are gonna stop our adhesive or our epoxy from bonding. Okay, so to do this, with this one, because this is a wear plate, we're going to use a product called Loctite PC722. It's a two-part epoxy, and it's a ceramic-filled paste. So, the products are two to one mix, so I'll get out twice the amount of the part A. It's quite a thick and heavy product, so this one does take a fair bit of mixing. Use half the volume. All right, so main issue here is to make sure you've got an even mix of the product. So you basically need to fold two parts together consistently until you get an even colour. So you can see at the bottom here, we still haven't got an even mix. So this can take up to a couple of minutes to make sure you've mixed it correctly. Okay, so I've been mixing this for about a minute or so, and it looks to me like we've got a fairly good mix at this point. There's no unusual colouring through it. It's all an even sort of dark grey colour. And for now, we're ready to apply it onto our surface. Now what we're going to do is just build this surface, as I said, back to its original level, and that's going to allow for complete efficiency of the pump. So we'll get, be able to get our clearances between this and the impeller correct again. So the best way to do it is to just put a small amount across the surface to begin with. Always looks messy from the beginning. And depending on the application of the pump, what the pump's actually being used for, it's quite important to really select the right product. In this case, this pump it doesn't experience a huge amount of wear. So this is quite a fine product, but it's still very wear resistant. If the wear is more significant, say it's pumping a large particle slurry, then we'd move on to one of our, um, our, our heavier duty epoxies like PC7226. But for this application, this will do the job. All right, so now that we've got a nice coating on the surface or enough product onto the surface, what we're going to do is basically just work this in. One of the things you don't want to do is work the product too much basically want to get a nice even coat and try and keep it as level as possible. 
Now you can work with this for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the ambient temperature. So what we'll do now is we'll allow this to cure for a little while, and then basically we can come back and just, as the product's starting to harden, we can just take off the little edges and we can get it completely flat, ready for the next coat, which will be a uh, spray-on ceramic coating that we're going to brush on in this application because it's so small. All right, now that we've finished the wear plate, we're gonna move on to the impeller. So what you can see here on this impeller is there's quite a bit of wear along the leading edges, which basically is what's cutting through the water. This is gonna to start to cause a fair bit of cavitation. And also there's a little bit of pitting all over the impeller itself. So we're gonna use the same product we were using earlier, which is the PC722, the wear resistant putty. Um, again, I've only just mixed this, so I can still continue to use this for about the next 20 or so minutes. So what we'll do, again, it's only just a small part on the edge, but we're gonna fill in all the way along these edges and on this side as well. And if I do notice as I'm going any other large damage, so areas where it's pitted a little bit more, that's what I'll fix. Getting just a small bit of the product and with pitting in areas like this, you really do need to make sure that you work the product right into the surface and that you don't have any hole or any air bubbles trapped underneath that could potentially allow the product to lift off later. Now, one of the questions a lot of people will ask when using these products is, is it going to cause any balance issues with, with the impeller? In a lot of cases, it won't for this type of repair. If you're doing some real major repairs, like repairing a huge piece of metal that's been removed, then in those situations, yes, it can affect the balance and it would always be advisable to check the balance of the impeller afterwards. So one thing you will see is some of these areas where the pitting's quite deep, what you will need to do is make sure you apply the product from different angles to ensure that it pushes product right into the pitted areas. And then we get a good bond to the surface right at the bottom. Okay, what we're gonna do at this point is we're just going to leave this for a little bit longer and we're going to allow the product to go to start to cure just that little bit. So probably in this temperature, I'd say we'll leave it to at around another 15 to 20 minutes. Then we'll come back and we'll finish this off nice and neatly. Then we'll move on to the next step. So now that our, our uh, wear plate and our impeller have both had a bit of time to cure, we've repaired the two, we've repaired all the damaged edges. We've repaired the face of the wear plate. We're now going to apply a ceramic coating or an epoxy based ceramic coating to the whole outside. So the product we've chosen for this one today is Loctite PC7255. Um, this is a sprayable ceramic coating, as you can see by the gun that we're using. Now, because of the size of this application, we're not going to spray the product but we're going to show the other advantage of, of this product is that it's quite versatile. It can be used to spray or it can be used as a brush on product. The advantage of using this one as a brush on product is it's self mixing. and You don't have to worry about mix ratios when you're working with the two products. So what I'll do is I'm going to dispense some of the product into a small bucket or a container and basically then just brush it over the two surfaces. Now, one thing you need to note with this is once these are cured, or the point that when you should apply your second coat is once these are cured to the point where you can basically touch the surface of the product and it's still soft enough that it'll just leave a fingerprint, but you don't really indent into the surface of the product. So it's hard enough that you don't, that you can't actually change the shape of the product. And one of the things to do with these guns or with these cartridges more to the point is to make sure that the cartridge is flowing properly. So take out the two covers. And then the first thing we wanna do is connect up to air. And I'll just need a cloth, which I will put here. And all you wanna do really first is just pull the trigger slightly and make sure that you've got both colours flowing from the cartridge. 
Let's just make sure there's no air bubbles and there's no blockages in the cartridge. Then you fit your nozzle, your mixing nozzle. Now, if we were to be spraying this product, the next thing we would do is we would connect up this hose. This will atomise the product on the way out of the nozzle. But because we're just going to use it to mix the product today, I'm going to leave this off and I'm going to apply it. I'm going to mix it straight into the bucket. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just dispense the product straight into this bucket, which will allow it to mix itself up and then we don't need to worry about it from there on. We can just apply straight onto the surface of the uh, impeller. Now, the best way to apply this product when you're using a brush is to make sure that you've got a shorter brush than normal. So you want quite short bristles and that's there really, the reason we use that is to force the product into any of the small pitted areas that we haven't filled up completely. So first thing you need to do is just make sure your product is completely mixed. So you just wanna make sure, just give it a quick mix around with the brush to make sure it's all completely mixed. Just because when it first does come out of the nozzle, it doesn't always come out evenly, but once it starts to flow, then you get a nice even mix. All right, so then we basically start to apply our first layer of the coating. And again, it's the same as any coating. You really want to move back and forward in both directions and make sure you're moving your brush in different directions just to ensure that you're filling up any holes in the surface and you're getting a nice even coat. So this product is quite thin, it will run a little bit, but you do have a fair bit of time to work with it so you can move it around. Don't worry too much if you don't get a completely even coating on your first coat because we will be doing a second. And the second coat is really there just to make sure we get enough surface thickness to give it its abrasion resistance properties and also to make sure that we've got a completely sealed surface so we don't get any water making its way through and causing an issue with delamination of, this, of the coating. But you can see the coating flows quite well and as it's quite a thin coating, what it will do is basically self-level and we'll end up with a nice smooth even finish. One of the other added advantages of this is it does provide a very low friction surface. Won't be a huge issue on this pump, but on a lot of larger pumps, it does reduce, it can uh, reduce the actual power consumption required by the, or required to run the pump. As you can see on the inside, it's already starting to level itself off a little bit. Just through this area in here. If you do start to see any areas where it's running, just a quick skim with the brush, tells you you've got the product on just that bit too thick. And that'll catch it before it gets any worse. Okay, so that's it for now. We've basically got the coating completed on both parts. So hopefully from the whole video that everyone's been able to learn something new or seen a couple of new applications for the Loctite products and where they can use them to help in their everyday work that they're doing. Um, our main aim here is to increase the reliability of, of any of the parts we assemble or increase the lifespan of whatever we're assembling as well. So if we can get this pump back up to 100% efficiency, that's our aim, or even slightly above now that we've got a nice low friction coating. Um, finally, the last thing I'd like to do is just thank um, Adam and the other guys at Pump Solutions Australasia for having us here today and giving us, the, giving us their workshop. And um, really, that is it. So thanks very much for watching.